Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. And for today's card, I am using the My Favorite Things Peony Perfection Stamp. I purchased this months ago. I forget when it came out. I had to own it. I bought it and it's been sitting here. So, decided to use it for today's card. This is a cling, this is red rubber on cling background stamp. So I removed the black foam mat out of my mini misty here. And I'm going to stamp this onto some Distress watercolor paper. And I used my anti-static powder tool. And then I'm stamping this a couple times with clear embossing ink, making sure I get a good even impression. I've been saying that a lot lately because especially when I'm stamping on white, you can't see it. So I'd rather stamp it multiple times and save myself the aggravation of pouring over embossing powder and realizing I missed half the image or whatever because the amount of times that's happened. <laughs> So coated it with detail white embossing powder, melted it with my heat tool and same thing because it's white on white, I tilt it back and forth in the light many times to make sure everything is smooth, shiny, melted, any dull areas I quickly hit with my heat tool to melt it. And then I taped this down to a hard board, trying to be better at following my own advice about taping your watercolor down. It makes a huge difference. It really helps prevent a lot of the warping. And then I've super sped this up in editing. This is like 800%. So I don't paint this fast at all, but I just sped it up. I didn't do anything groundbreaking. I just painted. And honestly, this was one of the times I had to follow my advice again and walk away from it. Cause when it was done, I wasn't happy with it. It just, I don't know. I just, I was like, it wasn't what I was picturing in my head, but I walked away from it and I came back to it and I was like, no, this is good. This is good. I'm going to make a card out of this. So. I used colors from last week's color throwdown challenge, which were red, coral, navy, and white. So I was using kind of red and then I mixed up kind of a coral color. This is the Altenew watercolor palette. I haven't used this in a while, so I wanted to pull it out and play with it some more. And I'd started off with just, you know, painting the, the actual bloom with water. And then, you know, I started dropping in the red and now I'm just going back and forth, adding more color. And then to really deepen that, that was what I was struggling with the most was I didn't have enough um, like shade variation in this, in my opinion. So, but I'll, as, and as always, my camera picks it up differently. How it looks in real life sometimes and how my camera picks it up is interesting. But I went in and I mixed a bit of the brown with the red and my camera picks this up is insanely dark. <laughs> it wasn't this dark in real life at all. Like this is pretty... Um, pretty intense, but mixing when you want your, when you're painting anything red and you want to intensify that red, you know, you want that deeper shade, but red is red. You can either add a bit of brown to it. You can also add a bit of purple, just depending on what you're doing and different colors and that sort of thing. But that's how you can kind of intensify something that you've colored with red. Brown is usually kind of a go-to. You just got to be light handed with it. So once I added that, I was much more pleased. You know, you got the, the darker and lighter areas. For the leaves, I actually mixed blue and green together. I wanted to bring in the blue for the color challenge. Plus blue and green just make beautiful shades of green. And then I let everything completely dry. And then of course added some splatter, not a lot. I added a bit of like a pink corally splatter. I added a tiny bit of blue splatter. And then I vigorously shook up my little mini mister bottle that I have water and Ranger's Perfect Pearl powder mixed in. So I shook that up really well. I splattered it. I don't know if anyone will be able to even tell on camera. I could tell again in real life, but the first bit of splatter, I hadn't cleaned my brush off very well. So it ended up being like a very pale blue shimmery splatter, but I was okay with it. I was fine with it. But then I used a clean, like really clean brush and I just dip my brush right in the mini mister bottle, pick up the color, splatter it on, it's good to go. So I let this again completely dry. So I'm not smearing everything everywhere. And then I can peel off that blue painter's tape. This panel is ready to go. This is an A2 panel, by the way. I'm going to cut this down with a wafer dye in a little bit. But yeah, that gives you an idea how big this stamp is. And of course, why I bought it, because large florals, hello, I have to own them all. And I love them and they're beautiful. So anyway, 
I die cut the, I had also purchased this All the Feels Wafer for Die set that MFT had released a while ago. I don't know, I just, I like the, I like the sentiment. It's like All the Feels. Very true. So I die cut the words multiple times from some coral color cardstock in my stash. This wafer die does come with an outline as well. So you can, you know, have the words and then the outline that I generally really like. But for today's card, I wanted just the words. So I die cut everything three times and I just stacked it all together with craft tacky glue to give it that nice dimension that I really love when it comes to die cut sentiments. And then to add a little bit extra dimension, I actually ended up taking a bit that blue painter's tape because I reuse my blue painter's tape until it cannot be reused anymore. I just stick it to the side of my desk <laughs> and then it's always getting caught in like the armrests of my chair and I, but yeah, I reuse it. I use it to tape down my wafer dies. I use it, you know, for all different sorts of things, not just taping down my watercolor paper, but I reuse those same pieces over and over again. So that's what I did here is I just taped down the sticky side up one of the pieces onto just back onto this hardboard. And then I'm going to add a little bit of candied apple distress oxide ink with my little mini blending foam, just kind of to the bottom half of these letters. And just like in my previous video, when I was talking about blending on color cardstock, if you struggle with blending or getting that smooth transition, practice on color cardstock and do similar colors. So the last car video I did like the mint cardstock and I used, I think peacock feathers oxide ink. And this was the coral cardstock with a little bit of the candied apple oxide ink. And it just, it's a lot more effortless and you get that smooth blend with very little effort. So I did that to those um, die cuts, set them aside to let the ink dry and then went a little old school here. <laughs> I'm using a uh, circle celebration background by MFT and I just have it face up on my work service. I used to show this all the time in videos. I use my Misty like 99% of the time now, but I didn't feel like pulling out the pig misty and I only have the edges of this are going to show because the card front of the flower is going to go in the middle anyway. But yeah, did the card face up or the stamp face up and then um, inked up the stamp with clear embossing ink. I'm pressing some navy cardstock into it. And then this one I coated with just clear embossing powder. And as always, it's there's something so satisfying about when it melts. And then same thing, tilt it back and forth, any dull areas hitting that with my heat tool to make sure everything's shiny and glossy and melted. And then I've got my like background complete, which I die cut slightly smaller. I use my waffle flower A2 layers dies and I die cut the navy background with that. And I also die cut the main image down with one of those wafer dies as well. And then I'm going to do a sentiment that I want to use on the inside of the card. I was originally going to use this on the outside, but decided to use it on the inside. And this is just from the little MFT uh, Double the Fun stamp set. I really liked this sentiment and it just kind of went with the, all the feels that'll be on the front. And then this sentiment says, my life is much better with you in it. So I white heat embossed that onto a piece of navy cardstock and then trimmed it down with my paper trimmer. And then my card base is some heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11, squared up five and a half. So this is a top folding A2 card, I know, shocker. Still trying to mix in some A2 cards here and there amongst all the slimline cards I love posting. So stamped that peony on the inside of the card with abandoned coral distress oxide ink. And then while I had everything out, I also pulled out a soft navy envelope to match and I'm going to stamp the peony onto that envelope using that same abandoned coral distress oxide ink. And the funny thing is, is because I wiped the stamp off, it's still a little bit damp. So it caused the ink to kind of oxidize on when I stamped on the envelope, which is kind of cool. Really hard to show on camera and in the photos, like the areas that are darker, it kind of it, like, it just, it oxidized. It's interesting. Like these inks are just fun to play with. So there's lighter and darker areas because the ink was oxidizing on the darker cardstock, which is just fun. So I stamped this multiple times because, um, something so fine like a line image on dark cardstock is harder to show up but yeah that just you know gives that little extra something to the envelope and then i adhered that sentiment to the inside of the card once that's adhered into place i can adhere all the the layers and the sentiment to the outside of the card and i just use my craft tacky glue for that so adhered my 
stamped background and then all I'd hear the peony panel and then I'd hear the die cut words and then of course as a final bit of embellishment and that little addition of bling I have the Studio Cadia Icy Sparkle crystals because I didn't put those away from the last card either so these are clear crystals with like they're not it's not silver glitter it's kind of like silver silvery slash iridescent it's hard to explain these are some of my absolute favorite embellishments so I went heavy-handed with these and just threw them on the card so adhere those into place with more craft tacky glue just using my little studio Cadia embellishment wand and then once these are adhered as always I will turn the flashlight on on my phone so you guys can get an idea of that shimmer sparkle from the perfect pearl powder that just love so yeah that was the card and envelope for today's video as always i will have a link below the video to my blog post i'll have a supply list i'll link to everything i use so you can check it out in the description box below thank you all so much for watching for subscribing thumbs up and commenting all of it i really appreciate it and i will see you all very soon in the next video bye <laughs>